Kent won their second successive Friends Life T20 match as they sent Sussex to their eighth defeat with a nine-run win in Canterbury. Batting first after winning the toss, Kent got off to an excellent start through their two young openers, Sam Billings and Fabian Cowdery. Cowdery attacked Michael Yardy in the third over, hitting the spinner for three successive fours, while Billings hit the former England man for a six as 19 runs came off the over, the second to be bowled by Yardy. He was replaced by Lewis Hatchett, who was also struck over the ropes by Cowdery, as this pair of batsmen put on 60 in the first five overs. Billings fell in the sixth for 24, missing another attempted big hit off Chris Little to be bold. Cowdery is a name steeped in Kent history, of course, but it's hard to imagine that any of his famous relatives played shots such as this one, one which gave the 20-year-old his second maximum. Little then got his revenge almost immediately with his second wicket of the over, his slower ball getting shot of Cowdery for an exciting 40, which had been made off only 21 balls. Things momentarily quietened down, although Darren Stevens did seem to enjoy the leg spin of Will Beer. He hit the bowler for 1-6 in his second over and then added two more in his final one, as Kent, who had belatedly finding some form in this competition, reached 129 for two with five overs of their innings remaining. Stevens dominated a third wicket stand of 62 with Brendan Nash, who'd made only 15 from 31 balls when he gave Little his third wicket at 132 for three. The more fluent Stevens remained, however, and this scampered couple of runs took him to a fantastic 50, which was made off only 38 balls in the final over of the innings. He'd hit two fours and three sixes in that, but was not done yet, even though only a few balls remained. In fact, Hatchett's last over of the piece went for 20, with Stevens uppercutting the final ball for six to finish on 67, in spite of only getting to his half century in the last over. He helped his team to an imposing 173 for three from their 20 overs. Sussex then lost Dwayne Smith to the fourth ball of their reply as he holed out of Adam Riley, the West Indian again not producing the unstoppable shots he has in the past for the Sharks. T20 cricket is all about the smallest of margins. A bat over here and a shot fell in to clear the boundary by a fraction there, making all of the difference. Roy Hamilton Brown and Matt Machen played their shots with a little less risk and for a while it worked well for them. Machen still played some cracking shots as he and his partner took the total to 46 for one after seven overs, leaving 128 to get from the final 13 and almost 10 runs per over. Chasing that down inevitably leads to wickets and sure enough, Hamilton Brown was leg before to Matt Coles for a runner ball 24, leaving with his side with plenty still to do. 108 were wanted off the second 10 overs and now both Machen and Chris Nash picked up the pace with the first maximums of the innings. Machen's came off Cowdery, while Nash took on Coles even though such shots were not frequent enough for the visitors. Machen is clearly a player with a very good future ahead of him and he proved that by going to a 50 or 40 balls with five fours and that six, but he could still only help his team to 114 for two with two runs per ball now required in the final five overs of the match. Stevens then picked up the crucial wicket of Nash for 31, Billings with the important catch at deep square off a fiercely struck shot, either side of the fielder and it would have been another six. So now the Sharks look to Machen, who struck 10 off two balls, including this maximum, to take the target down to 46 off the final four overs. Machen now needed to take his side home, but instead on a 48 ball 67, he could only find Billings in the deep off Vernon Philander, and with that, Sussex's hopes of winning diminished greatly. By the time that Philander began the penultimate over, 34 was still required and even this big shot from Ed Joyce was not going to be enough. When he sacrificed his wicket to keep Scott Styris at the crease, calls with a throw from the boundary, it left the Sharks with 23 to get off the last six deliveries. Mitch Claydon's first ball was a dot, his second being struck for four before Styris smacked the third for a huge six. Had he repeated that next ball, then a few nails may have been lost in the crowd. Instead, he couldn't quite get enough off his shot, allowing Nash to end the game with a catch. 
Only three more runs came off the last three balls and that gave Kent their second successive win. Again, Sussex had ended up on the wrong side of a close result, losing this one by nine runs to move to the foot of the group. They will most likely be happy when they can get back to the longer forms of the game.